For almost the last 10 years, I've been working, uh, studying theology and working within the church. But at the same time, I've also been working in the coffee industry. There came out of this a sort of bivocational cross-pollination, where my faith life began to inform my coffee life, and my coffee life began to inform my faith life. In some ways, I started to do coffee in ways that I thought were more ethical trying to pay farmers fair wages and working directly with projects to help those who bring the beans to us. But I also began to see ways in which what I was doing with coffee could be used as a meditation or reflection on the things of the kingdom of God. Today I'd like to share with you one way that I use coffee to view the work that God is doing in the world. For those of you who don't know, coffee is created by combining roasted coffee seeds that we call beans with water. It can be done any number of ways, but the end goal is always the same. A suspension in the water of the solids in the coffee. The problem any coffee and brewed undergoes is trying to figure out how to get the solids to join with the water. As you can see, a coffee bean by itself does not mix well with water. It might get damp, but it remains a solid, while the water remains a liquid. This is the way that Christians often look at the world. When you look around you, it becomes obvious that there is a lot of difficulty in the world. People hurt one another. There is violence and wars. Families are torn apart. And even in our own hearts, we find ugly things like bitterness, greed, and hatred. Christians believe this is because creation has become separated from the life of God. This is called sin. As much as we try to be united to God, we can't seem to enter into his life. Even when we try to choose him, our brokenness and the darkness of our minds seems to block the path. Our sin gets in the way. We are hopelessly and selfishly separated from God. The way I reflect on this is by thinking of myself as some coffee beans, unable on their own to be united with the water. Christians believe that God did not desire to have us separated from his life. So in his love, God did an amazing thing. The person of Jesus Christ, God became man. He took on all our brokenness, all of our will, our pain, our temptation, our existence. He lived a human life with family and friends and ethnicity. He was part of a community, that of the Jewish people, whom God had called long ago to be his own. But in all of this, he chose God. He ate, drank, taught, loved, and caused a lot of trouble for the rulers of his day. So those in power subjected him to torture and crucifixion. And so he was hung on the cross, and suspended with him was all the pain and greed and selfish choices that have come into this world through our sin. And like all of us, Jesus died. But this was not the end of the story. Unlike us, Jesus was also in communion with the divine economy of love. God vindicated Jesus by raising him up by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus, God made a new way to live, a way to be fully human, but also part of the divine life, a life of love and humility rather than hate and egotism. Because Jesus also assumed all that made us human, our wills, our bodies, and our all, he was able to heal us holistically. Jesus brought us into the wholeness of the divine community that we call the Trinity. Not only that, but God raises us up in new ways every day through the community which Christ established that is called the church. And as the church, we are called to live and share that life in and with the whole of creation. This is the gospel.